out. We are getting ready to cook. Let me first introduce to you our special guest chef tonight. This is Cindy Good to Hudson. be here. Very good. Cindy, we are so happy you're here. Thank you. Cindy has a restaurant in Miami called Cerveceria. Good. I did. <laughs> La Tropical. Okay. And it's a tough one to say. Cerveceria La Tropical. Where is it located? It's located in Wynwood, um, 42 Northeast 25th Street. So it's on the east side of North Miami Avenue, right along the railroad tracks. It's a beautiful big brewery with a garden. It's huge. Um, it's kid friendly. It's a, a lot of families come there. Uh, live music Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's just fun. Oh, good, good. Well, we're happy to have you here. And you are, you were challenged yes. to come up with a recipe that would feed a family of four for $20 or less. And you chose to do? I chose to do the butternut squash and white bean chicken chili. Okay. Now, it's interesting because I don't think, and I'm not sure if any of you have ever had butternut squash in our chili. I, I mean, I guess I'm just more the traditionalist, you know, the beans right. and the beef and, you know, that's it. Well, I'm under, all the time I'm thinking of things to, to pump up the health factor and the protein factor in whatever it is I make. I do a lot of work for the Miami Cancer Institute uh, developing food for cancer patients, and, and it's very important to bump up the protein, to cut back on the white sugar and the and the salt. And so I'm very cautious about anytime I create a, a recipe, I like to throw in that extra bright orange veggie in there, carrots if I can, whatever I can for the vitamin C and the antioxidants. And of course the, the beans, although they're carbs, they're very high in protein, so it kind of negates the fact that there's right. carbs in it. Right. And then also, because of the beans, you really, you can, if you have rice, serve it with rice. It's delicious on rice. But the beans kind of give it that starchy feel, mm -hmm. so you don't have to have rice Great. if you don't have it in your house. Great. Well, let's go ahead. Our families are ready to start cooking. Okay. So if you all have your meal kits out and all your ingredients out, we're going to go ahead and what are we starting with first? So I'm going to start with the garlic because it has to be peeled. Um, I usually try to strip off a piece of the outside and then kind of separate it with my hand. They have all kinds of gadgets that you can buy, but you know, there's nothing better to me than my very inexpensive flat knife. So I would put the piece of garlic down, skin on, and put it flat on top of it and just smack it. And then the garlic comes out and the skin is there. Easily. Yeah, yeah, it comes out yeah. very easily. So I'm gonna do that to a couple pieces. Do you all have your garlic out and, and a flat side of your knife and just smash it hard? Yep, Geneva's working on that. See a couple other people if they would turn on their cameras, but they're working in their kitchen, so following you along. There we go. We've got about two or three cloves of garlic, would you say? Yeah, I'm gonna put two, I, I happen to like garlic. Um, especially because it's not raw garlic, it'll be sauteed and, and then it'll be more nutty, flavorful than it would be pungent and strong and, and you know, strong garlic. I, I, I like to saute it all. Right. So there, we've got our pieces of garlic. Okay. And once I have it, you guys got yours opened up already? Let me see, do I see it? Yeah, it's hard there to you see. Go. There, you can see, look at um, oh, look, iPhone yeah. in the top right. She's yep. got her garlic going, yep. yes. And she just smashed a nice smash there. <laughs> Good so, job. <laughs> once, I, once I throw away the skins of it, I go back and I just, here's an easy way to use your knife. You, you hold your knife above the food and with the top of your hand, and, and then you kind of just rotate it around and it makes you be able to mince up your onions or it kind of rocks like a rocking horse right. there. Right, so you're not actually cutting through yeah. it. You're yeah. just rocking it back and forth. Yeah, and we just want it a little, little minced. We call that mince. And then I'm going to push that to the side of my cutting board and go for the onion. Are we ready to go to onion yet? We're still working a little bit on I can wait. our garlic. It's okay. I um, can wait. We've got a couple others. So you can see in the top right. Yep. Here we go. Nice job. Nice job, Cedriana. You're doing well. 
And remember, if, if you like the flavor of garlic, you don't have to stick with just the three cloves like I did. You can add more. You can, you know, garlic so crazy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, especially because you're sautéing and cooking, it's not like you're gonna, you know, like when you eat garlic bread that has loaded raw garlic and olive oil on it. I don't like that. That's too strong for me. Mm -hmm. I, I like my garlic so it's a little sautéed. Right. And then I'll throw it on the bread. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I used to think of garlic as being an Italian thing. Uh -huh. You know, and I'm realizing more and more as we're going into different cuisines, garlic is universal. It seems like just about every cuisine yeah. uses garlic. Yep, yep. You know, it's kind of like an onion, very universal. Yeah, everything. But, uh, um, you know, some people can't tolerate their stomachs can't tolerate the raw onion and garlic. Like I'd never put a piece of raw onion on a burger, but people love raw onion on a burger, but I personally can't tolerate it. Right. So yeah, you can saute both and, and take off the harshness from it if it's something that bothers you. And a real quick question while we're just finishing up on our garlic. Can we substitute garlic powder, garlic salt? I mean, tell me the pros and cons of doing something like that. I think you can. I, I try to use whole, the whole product where, where it's necessary. I get nervous if I say to you, use garlic salt, because garlic salt is very, very salty. And if you're using garlic salt because you don't have any fresh garlic in your house, then you want to make sure if this recipe or any recipe you're doing that calls for salt, if you're using garlic salt, most likely don't, add, don't any add any extra salt. That'll be your salt. And uh, my daughter yells at me all the time as she and I get in wars in the kitchen cooking <laughs> all the time. She's a baker and I do savory and she does sweet. And uh, one time she threw a pie crust at my back. Oh no. Yeah, on Thanksgiving. Yeah, oh, I Thanksgiving. told her yeah, I told her, you need to go and buy the Pillsbury right. already and made. Said, no, and she way, said Mom. no and then I made fun of her dough and that was the end of that. No. But anyway, so so nonetheless, uh, she says when I use garlic salt and things that I oversalt them. And and she's right. I for some reason I don't gauge garlic salt well. So then go to garlic powder, and you're not going to have the salt the in it, but you're going to have strong garlic flavor. So, okay. you know, just be aware of you can't use salt and garlic salt. Right. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Okay, good. So next we've got our onion. I see Cedriana already has hers peeled. She's so, ready to yeah. go. And I, I like to peel mine. I like to then cut it in half and place them flat side down. Okay. We've got an overhead shot of you right now yep. so they can watch you do this. And then I just, be careful with your fingers, um, I just take it and go like that. Hmm. Some people do it all different kinds of ways. Right. You just have to be careful and do what you're comfortable with. And then if I go back, I go the opposite way, horizontally. So what we're looking here is for, what, a medium-sized dice, would you yeah, say? Yeah, I would say a medium-sized dice because I like the texture of it in the in the chili. And so then I'll go for my next little piece here. And so we're using in this recipe a full onion. Yes. Okay, and what? how would you describe this onion? Is this like a Vidalia sweet This onion is, I, I don't like white onions. Number one, they make my eyes really burn, white onions. These are uh, yellow onions, large. Um, it, now, if we're looking to save money, you have to be careful because Vidalia onions and sweet Walla Walla onions, they're called, those are sweet onions. They're going to be way more expensive per pound than your regular yellow onions. Onion. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. that, that's a good tip. You know, that's one thing we always do in these cooking classes. And thank you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. We always try to give tips on, you know, how to save money, how to go grocery yeah. shopping, what to look for, what to try and avoid. That's a very good tip. And I think, too, my experience with yellow onion is it's mild. It's not the sweet. It's, it's much not, milder, yeah. It's yep. mild, and it seems to just really add a nice flavoring without yep. an overpowering flavor. Exactly. Yeah. And the other thing is, is why I don't like, um, it's more convenient for me. Oh, and when you're cutting, always put your fingertips in if you're holding something. You don't want to hold something with your fingertips out. You want to hold the onion with them in so you don't risk taking the tip yes. off, as many chefs do. Oh, it happens. Um, and the re another reason I like this yellow onion is because the size of it, um, it's much easier to chop and, and peel and all that than those little tiny white ones are. 
Uh, not only are they really potent, and you, you cut them in half, and you literally see all the juice dropping out of them, uh -huh. and then the eyes start. Oh, but yeah. And they're also much harder to uh, navigate your knife around. So, right. so if your knife skills are, you know, you're, you're perfecting them. And, and then again, the more you use your knife, the better you're going to get at using your knife. Well, I love, Cedriana has her camera set up right on her cutting board. Really? So you can see everything she's doing, and so does iPhone, whose name I don't know. But wow, look, they, and they're, you're they're fast. Going, they're going, Car Caroline, nice, nice. Look at, she's already got her onion all done. Geneva's working. Nice. So, yeah, look, we're, we're, they're actually catching up to you, if not getting They out. are. <laughs> I'm, here I am trying to go slow, and you guys are just speeding right along. Okay, let's talk about the order in which you cook things. When I write my recipes, I very much try, try, to write the ingredients in the order in which I use them. Now, I could take all the onions, all the peppers, all this ingredients, put oil in the pan, throw it in the pan and cook it, right? It is not gonna taste the same as doing it in layers. You'll get layers of flavor. Mm. So I'm going to put the oil in the pan first. Right. I'm going to make sure we get your stove going for you. Yep. We sometimes have some tricks with the stove. He said this one works. This, okay, let's just make There sure you go. Have. Okay. So what would you say? Medium heat? Medium high to medium start. Medium high. Okay. And my onions were a little small, so I'm going to use one and a half onions in mine. So what I mean when I say layers of flavor, it's like I consider myself an excellent soup maker. And uh, when I was a little girl, my dad on Sundays, that's when we would make soup of all the leftovers that we had throughout the week. Now, if I had a pot of soup and I just threw every ingredient in it at once, turned it up, brought it to a boil and simmer it, it tastes okay, but it's not going to taste like this is going to taste. When you're layering. Because mm -hmm. what are we doing? We are bringing out a caramelization. I don't want to burn them. I don't want them dark in color. But the small amount of time that we saute them alone, the sugars are being released. If you keep it too hot or too long, your caramelization of the sugar gets darker and darker and darker. Now. This is a dark chili. Well, it's not really that dark, not as dark as a regular one is, but we're gonna bring it just right before they end up getting um, caramelized. Okay, so we're putting the garlic and the onion in the pan over medium high heat with our oil. Yep, and now I'm gonna go back to the pepper while that's beginning to saute. Okay. I'm going back to the pepper. All right, everybody should have a red pepper in your kit. So we'll go ahead and while you're sauteing, again, while yep. you're sauteing the onion and garlic, we're gonna go and start working on that red pepper. Yep. So just to the edge of the green stem here is where I'm gonna make my first cut. And I'm gonna turn it and turn it again. And throw my core Oh, there we go. Throw my core away. <laughs> the seeds are very bitter. So if you can, um, maybe you have a sink close, you can just rinse out the seeds that might be stuck inside because they are bitter. And if you give it a light rinse or, or at least tap them, we don't have anything else to cut after this. So I guess you could just tap them onto your cutting board. We got this other... Okay, do we have a question? We're doing well? Okay, please remember if you have a question, just uh, put it in the chat box or um, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you. But it looks like everyone's following along, Cindy. There's Yay. Red, there are red peppers right now. Okay, so the next thing I do, because again, the membrane inside can be a little bitter. So you see this white part here, that part there? I'm just going to take my knife and, and cut that out, all the little white parts out. So we've taken both the seeds and some of the white membrane yes. out. Okay. Here's another one. So when I see it like that, I'm going to cut it there along the edge, and then I can just remove it. Great. 
okay? And I'm gonna push all my seeds out of the way. And let's call this a medium dice. If you don't have a really sharp knife, it's better to cut it from the inside. Something about the skins, if you go from the top side with a dull knife, it's not gonna cut through as easily. So I go from the inside. And let's get, keep an eye, keep you, you gotta be like the mom that has eyes in the back of her head. You gotta keep your eye on the pot so you're not burning your garlic or your onions. So you got a little stir. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more of the oil into it. Okay. And we could, could you do me a favor, please, and turn that down? Sure. Just to a medium, medium. Medium. It was on medium high. So now I'm gonna cut these babies here. Okay, so we're dicing up the red pepper. Yep. And we could use a green pepper or a yellow pepper. You like the color of the red pepper for this recipe? I like the color of it and the flavor of it. I'm not a fond lover of green peppers. They're, they're much stronger to me in, and they don't have the kind of the sweetness as these these peppers have, which another reason, green peppers are less expensive than these because these do have the, the visual prettiness to them as well as a little bit of sweet flavor. Okay, but in a, in a, in a pinch, we could we yeah, could use sure a, you could. a green pepper. Sure you could. Okay. Some right. people like, like in, in, anyway, in, in Mexican cooking in Chile, um, in chilies, a lot of people use green peppers. Cindy, tell us a little bit about what got you into, what inspired you to be a chef? The truth is, my mother was a terrible cook. Your mother? <laughs> and I loved to eat. I loved to eat. Um, so, but I just used to cook all the time at my house, um, dating myself way back. There was not the TV Food Network. There was a show called The Galloping Gourmet. And that guy used to dance around his studio audience and cook his food, and he looked like he was having so much fun. So I would follow his recipes and ask my mom to buy the ingredients so on the weekend when I wasn't in school, I could cook. Oh, wow. And so I would cook at home. Never did I think I was going to be a professional chef. That came way later. Um, well, and that's inspiring, too. Yeah. You know, we do have children that are cooking, and even... Oh, it's so much adults. fun. Yeah. So to, much fun. To get exposed to cooking and enjoy it, and then to be able to make a career out of it down yeah. the road. Is yeah, so it was like, honestly, I, I was not... My older brother and sister were great in school. I was not that great in school, unfortunately. I was very artistic, great in the artsy type classes, but when it came to math and all that, I was not good. And yeah. They wanted me to go to college so bad, and I didn't want to go. I felt I was going to waste their money. I guess I didn't have confidence in myself, really. And so, see how it's starting to get a little golden yeah, now? We yeah. Now we want to add in the peppers. Okay, because, so we have an overhead shot, so they're able yep, to see what you're doing. Yep, see, they're, they're little golden, so yeah. So yeah, I didn't have confidence in myself, and um, so I actually moved down to Florida, and um, I went fishing for a living, and my parents were so upset about it. Oh, no. But then I still continued to cook all the time, because I always had fresh fish, and um, then I met my husband and uh, his mother, who was a famous Caribbean chef in Jamaica, his mother... His name was Norma Shirley. She was a very famous chef in Jamaica. And he grew up in the restaurant business with her. You know what? I had had no confidence in myself for the longest time. And he's the one that grabbed me by my hand. He was my engine and said, you're going to cook for a living. You're going to go and be in my kitchen. He wanted to open his own restaurant. And he threw me in the kitchen. And I cried every day, <laughs> every was day. It difficult? It was difficult. Yeah, because I didn't think, I, again, I had no confidence in myself. But you know what cooking did? Cooking brought out a lot of confidence in me because I didn't have confidence. And then all of a sudden I had people saying, oh my gosh, this is so delicious. How did you do this? Where did you get the flavors or the ideas from? You know, and one thing led to another and I felt proud that I had attached myself to an engine and not an anchor. 
Right. And I wasn't going to be dragged back. I was going to go forward. I like that. Attach yourself to an engine and not an anchor. Yeah. Like, you know, That's like what I try to do. In anything I do, I look for the engines. Nice job, Wadis. We just got a chance to see your, your uh, red peppers. Adriana is working on hers. We're going to go ahead and get that into the same pot where your onions and your garlic are already sauteing. Yep. Okay. Like we're, are, we're we, are we in the pot yet? Yeah, I think Oh, that one is. Yeah, we're getting Okay, now I am going to... Okay, let's talk about ground chicken. So in the original recipe... I was going to do turkey because we're coming up on Thanksgiving. So, we actually have good news. So we were able to get the turkey for everybody. Oh, you got the turkey? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, good then. Good. I got chicken, but it's the same. <laughs> so well, the why I did it is, well, let me tell you all the different things. So the tur ground turkey, which I really wanted to do more than the chicken, but when I went shopping, the ground turkey was a lot more price per pound. And I think... One, there's a turkey shortage. I know that being a chef. There's a turkey shortage. Two, um, it's right around Thanksgiving, so of course they're going to raise the turkey prices. So that's why I went to the chicken. But we could do turkey or chicken. Like turkey, we chicken. You could, you could do ground beef. You could do ground lamb. You could do, if, if, you, were, if you were a vegetarian and you used, a, they have that plant-based bulk sausage, you could use that and vegetable stock instead of chicken stock and you'd have a vegan meal a mm -hmm. very healthy vegan meal great yeah so we have a pound here of yes. red ground chicken okay everybody you've got a pound of ground turkey in front of you so mm -hmm. go ahead and, and open that up kind of i kind of break it up as i throw it into the pan okay good very good. And I see that even the red pepper right now is starting to look like it's getting a little tender too. Yes, yes, definitely. And that's the terminology for that, as they say in the kitchen, uh, sweat. When you see in a recipe, sweat the onion or sweat the peppers, this is exactly what we're doing. Okay. So it looks like they're sweating. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get an overhead shot of that, Martin. Yep. So you can see. Yep. Okay, and so you just crumbled it up. Yep, and then I'm going to take my my wooden spoon here and stir it up in there. Now, we want it to get like golden brown, just golden. It does not have to be cooked all the way through because we're going to add the stock and start simmering it. Um, so are we still on medium heat here? Yes, we're still on medium. Okay. And uh, what do I have next in order? Add the chicken, sauteing to brown, add the taco seasoning. Okay, the, so taco seasoning, not chili seasoning. No, this one's taco seasoning. And uh, they have different flavors when you go into the grocery store. I'm not going to use this whole pack because also we bought Rotel. Did you, uh, Alessandra, did you buy the, um, the chili fixing Rotel or the cilantro lime? Because it comes in different flavors. The chili one? The chili uh, and one. we got some mild and some regular. Okay, so I'm only going to use, that's what I have, is the chili fixing one. And I'm going to use two tablespoons of it. So again, everyone, don't throw the whole packet in. I know it's easy to just think you do. But I mean, at the end, if you wanted to try it and decided, because I always have tasting spoons. I want to taste what I'm, what I'm making before I finish the recipe. So, but normally I'll just fold that down. Maybe if I have a rubber band in the house, put a rubber band on it. And if I'm grilling chicken or cooking anything, this can be sprinkled on as you would salt and pepper before you cook a meat. And I think that's also another real good budget saving tip. Yep. Because there's many different seasonings in that seasoning exactly. packet. As opposed to going out and buying individually every seasoning and then taking just a, a little bit of it and then you've got the whole jar. Exactly. Here, you're just, you know, you got everything and you have more for another night, like you said. So, but I think honestly that I, I don't, Alessandra would know, but a, a taco seasoning packet, it's like a dollar nineteen, maybe a dollar fifty. So um, you know, that's a good value for all the spices you get in that. It pack. does. 
And, and this will last, I mean, for if you're feeding four to six people, four people, this will last you a couple of more t dishes, you know, a yeah. couple more dishes to do. Okay, so we have that. Okay, just checking in on okay. our cooks out there. How are y'all doing? Geneva, you got steam in your face. I Look can't see you. your face. Oh, let's see what you got. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so her chicken is browning. Definitely okay. doing great. Oh, Wadith, nice job. We got to get beautiful. you a little bit more brown on her yep. on her turkey. Okay. I need my glasses so I can see better. I know, it's fun. It's fun to watch them cook. I love it. So now I just poured in the rotel. Okay, nice job, iPhone. You're showing me your skillet. Thank you. Good job. Okay, so we pour in an entire can of the yes. rotel. Right? I will say, which I probably should have mentioned to you ladies before I gave you the recipe, that the rotel chili fixing has spice in it. The rotel mild cilantro lime, which I also have here, because like I said, if you're not a spicy person, you don't like spice, go for one of the make a switch and don't get the chili fixing one uh, and also because you use the chili fixing one don't go adding more um, chili powder or cayenne pepper because it's in here it already, already. Has it. yeah yes another yeah. nice little saving yes. tip that your spices are already included that's great yes okay so then we need to drain our beans. Okay, what do we have there? Chickpeas. These are chickpeas. Okay, so you all should have a can of chickpeas. We're gonna go ahead, open it up, and drain out all that liquid. You just pour the beans in there. Yeah. Yep, I just poured the beans in. That's the chickpeas, and now here's the cannellinis. So we're using two different type of white beans. We said this was a white bean chili. Uh huh. We're using two different kinds. You could just use both, you know, cannellini. You're just having fun here. Any one you want. Um, the cannellini beans have a little more higher protein than red beans do. I don't know why, but they do. Um, so I just, you know, just for a change, everybody's so used to the big red kidney beans. Stir that all together. Looks beautiful. And I like the fact that you're using di two different types of white beans. It just adds a neat texture and yep. adds some interest to the chili. Uh, I think I put two tablespoons of the, did I put that in the recipe? Yes, tomato paste. Okay. so. That'll yeah, thicken our sauce when we put it in. Okay, we're gonna slow down just a second okay. here. We've got everyone still working. I can see they're okay. they're working on their beans. Yep. Okay. Uh, Geneva's right there. She's got oh Geneva, those are two big only two. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato paste can get really strong, so be careful yeah. how much you're adding, girl. Um, and obviously you have some left over in your can, and here's my little tip. I don't want that to go to waste, no. but I know that if I put it in the fridge, I probably won't be using it regularly. So what I do is I scoop mine out and I put it in a little Ziploc bag, one of those little snack bags. In the bags, freezer. And put it in the freezer. It's so nice. And then next time you're cooking, you know you're not opening a brand new can all over again. So this is, like I said, if you wanted to make it vegetarian, you could use vegetable stock instead of this. Um, what do I, how many cups do I have in here? One and a half cups. So this holds two cups. I'm going to measure one and a half. Okay, just make sure you're draining those beans. For those of you that are just putting your beans in your chili right now, make sure you do drain them before you add them to the chili. They're catching up. And then what we did after that was two tablespoons of tomato paste. Yep. And then we just added the chicken stock. And again, how much was that? That was one and a half, a little more than one and a half cups. If you, I don't know how, what kind of, what do you guys have? Yeah. Show me in your pictures. Someone show us your chicken stock. Is that a can? How many ounces is in that can? See what we got here. okay that's 32 all 32 ounces we okay got 32 ounces. so you're gonna have leftover of that as well too so you know that if you you could either bump this up to make it saucier with it and add more tomato paste or you can freeze that as well you can put it in one of these deli cups or right and and freeze, freeze it. it 
and use it for the next time. Or if I can say, Thanksgiving is next week. That's and right. I think chicken stock is delicious in my stuffing recipe. So yep. if you're making homemade stuffing and you need a liquid, that chicken stock that you have left over definitely can go into your stuffing. Okay, we want to bring this to a boil. Which okay. I don't have you my glasses have on. No, that's okay. I'll get you. Oh, I got the wrong one, that's why. There you go. That's as high as it goes. Yeah, so I'm going to want it to go to a simmer. Now, do you guys have um, a lid for your pots, or do we need foil? Because really, these are blanched, these, these butternut squash, but mine, I don't know what brand you have, mine are particularly not cooked all the way through. Um, let me see what brands you have of the butternut squash. So are they in Ziploc bags? Alessandra, did you divide them up? That's the one ingredient we had to divide up, yes. Okay. So are they hard? They haven't been frozen. Uh, are they, they have. Fresh they or have. Frozen? They have. They're just different sizes, but yes, they have been frozen. Okay. So she, what she did is she got a big bag and then divide. Oh, okay. It okay. Into smaller, but okay. They were previously frozen. Okay. So then they go in there. So that means they've been blanched before they were frozen, which means they're par cooked. Actually, these look like they're cooked all the way. And my bag was only a 10 ounce bag and we're supposed to put a one pound bag in. So I'm gonna put the second one in as well. Okay, so for all of you out there that you have your butternut squash, it's already been measured and portioned out for you. So if you've gotten to this point with the recipe where you've added um, the tomato paste and the chicken broth, it's now time to go ahead and grab your butternut squash and put it in. I, yes, nice, I can see it. If you can get an overhead shot here, Matson, I just want to show everybody the size of this butternut squash because that's going to affect your cooking time. Uh, I, depending on how large... They, they look like theirs was pretty large, too. Okay, okay. So look, this is... Let me just hold one and then you can tell better. It's like a two-inch... Right oh, here. The here. Camera, there you go. See how big it is. Is that how, what your size of them of is? You can tell right there. You'll see they're a little bit bigger. Oh, they're bigger. So they're going to take a little bit longer to cook, right? So you may want to cut them smaller. Or no? Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think, I think you should cut them a little smaller. Yeah, let's do that. If you've already put it in, don't worry. Just yeah, know don't that worry. It's going to take a little bit longer maybe um, to get it completely. What yeah. are we looking for the butternut squash to, to be? Fork tender. Okay. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be mushy, but if you overcook them and they get mushy, it doesn't matter. All they do is, is break up in your sauce and make the sauce nice, nice and thick. If you wanted to put it over rice or something like that, but, but you don't have to. Okay, great. Well, I love this idea. As I mentioned before, I, you know, I've had chili, more the traditional chili. You've now taken it to a chicken level, uh -huh. and you've taken it to the white bean level, and now you've taken it to the butternut squash level. So this is this very This is really healthy. Oh, I'm so very happy. Very healthy. Not a lot of fat in it, okay, and, it, and it's tasty. Um, I, at this point, I'm going to taste my broth to see... To me, it needs no more seasoning whatsoever, so I don't even need to put salt or pepper in it. I taste the cayenne from, from this. I taste the chili, uh, the taco powder, and uh, it has a little kick to it. It does have a little kick if you use the chili fix in one. Okay, great. And like you said, you can serve this over rice and kind yep. of stretch the meal a little bit and give it a little more starch to uh -huh, it. Exactly. Okay, great. Well, this is beautiful. So at this point, how long are we cooking? Well, I just t touch these, and those are fully cooked, my, my squash. It depends how they're fully cooked, which is surprising. They usually aren't. Okay. Um, it, it just depends. If yours are hard, hard. Are they all hard? It looks like we've got, you can tell Cedriana is doing a good job. She's cutting hers into smaller, which means they're going to cook faster. Oh, yeah. nice job. Geneva, is that fork tender? Are you able to get your fork through it? She says yes. Okay, so then That's they good. were part cooked. Good. Okay, good. Good. Okay. okay, everyone's doing well, so we're getting close. Yeah, we, yeah. do you have a tasting spoon by by you? And just grab a spoon from one of your And, and taste dishes. your sauce and see if you think you need um, any flavoring. I would almost bet you don't. Yeah, Geneva's tasting hers. I can see her. What taste. do you think? Geneva, does it need more? It's no, good, it's right? Good. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. All right, anybody have any questions for um, the chat? I see that we have 
Alessandra, I see we have two things in chat. Are those instructions you're writing out yourself? Uh, no, there's uh, just uh, team members uh, thing, <laughs> you know, planning okay. for everybody. Okay, so great. All, great job they're doing. Oh, good, good, good. Everyone's loving you, Cindy. Why they like it? <laughs> they like you and they oh, like it. They okay, like listen it. here, listen here, you people. If you get the question next week, who is the chef, you better not forget who it was. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you make? And on um, what did I make? Well, so now they're you all it. upped me one. You got the turkey. Yeah. I got the chicken. You got the turkey. We might have to get a little more tougher than just the chef and what you made. We might have to take one of your tips. One of the tips. Yeah, I think we're going to take a tip. So if you all were listening closely to one of the tips, and you can say it next week. I'm going to kind of... I already give away what So happened. a couple of things too that I wanted to talk about if you had parsley around the house. We eat with our eyes first, right? When you get a plate of something or a bowl of something in front of you, when you see these bright, beautiful colors, it's your first thing, your brain is working now and your eyes with your eyes and it, you go, well, that looks really pretty. It looks really nice. If you go ahead and you had parsley at home or cilantro at home or even sour cream in your fridge, some leftover sour cream, chop up the herbs right when you're done, uh, going to serve it like I'm going to do. You put it in the bowl. You could put a dollop of sour cream on top and the chopped either parsley or cilantro and it's even more pleasing to the eye and the brain. Mm -hmm. And then you take that first bite. Oh. I'm a cheese person. I'd put grated cheese on there too. Uh, I was going to say, I do cheese and I do yeah. avocado. If oh, if you have an avocado, avocado yep. Too. So, yeah, it's fun kind of adding yeah. toppings, although this is a beautiful meal in and of itself. And we can turn it down job. because we're cooked. We are cooked. We're okay. all cooked. All right, so what are we doing now? Are we ready to plate? I'm and ready to up? plate. Are you all ready? They may, they may not be. Um, we've still got a few people out there cutting their butternut squash, which is just fine. That's just fine. It's just fine. Make sure you check on your skillet. Make sure that uh, you've got the good liquid going on in there and nothing's getting too hot or uh, cooking too fast. Uh, just keep an eye on your skillet. And like I said, if you had cheese, cheese in your fridge tonight, just sprinkle some on. Um, or if you had sour cream, put a dollop of that on. Another thing that the cheese and the sour cream will do because it has a fat content in it, if it's a little spicy, it tones down the spiciness by putting cheese and putting sour cream in it. Great, great. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to finish up here. Yep. This, you know, typically what happens is sometimes that it delays a little bit for them. They'll follow your instructions and they'll finish on their own. Okay. But ours is ready, so we'll go ahead with that. So I'm going to put it in a nice bowl and the colors are just amazing. The colors tell me, one, that it has, like, and this could even, it's filling. So you might be able to have a little leftover, chill it in a deli cup or a takeout container, stick it in your fridge and have it the next have it, day for have lunch. Have it the next day or, you know something I like to do with leftover chili? I like to make nachos with it. There you go. I, you know, it's the fun. You don't even season. have to. Have, you can you can put this inside. You can buy the taco shells at the store, or there you, you can buy. Like, excuse me. Like I said, football season. Yes. You can just go ahead and and buy um, nachos, nacho yeah. chips. Nachos and add your cheese <laughs> yeah. that you love on top. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so I want it to have a little bit of color on top. This is gorgeous. And you know what I love about this, Cindy, is you are our chef in the fall season, and this is such a beautiful fall dish. It's awesome. It's awesome for the fall. Look how yeah. pretty. Oh, gorgeous. We have an overhead. We're getting an overhead of it. There oh, we whoops, go. There we go. Yep, we've got it. Okay. Oh, what a nice job. Nice job. Beautiful. Just go ahead. Oh, you have a cover. Good job. Um, as Cindy said, you know, take a spoon, taste it for seasoning. Um, the last you're looking for is just that your fork tender with the last ingredient you put in, and that was the butternut squash. And yes. then call everybody to dinner. I'm sure the kids are oh, kids are in the kitchen. Kids are smelling it. Yep. Yes. Oh, Geneva, beautiful. So beautiful. I love it. And okay. I love it on the blue plate. Oh yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Nice. Very nice, everyone. 
Well, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight. It's been fun having you, Cindy. We hope we have you again. Oh, I would love to come back <laughs> again. We'll get another season, and then, and then I'll yeah. figure out something, like maybe when we get nice fruits and stuff, oh, maybe yeah. we could do something, do like, something that. like that. Mm -hmm. Well, and you cooked fish. Maybe we could oh. do a fish recipe. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm pretty good it. at fish recipes, and I can figure out how to make them affordable, too. Yes. Because... You know, everything's so expensive right now, oh, yeah, everything. And and so if you know how to navigate the grocery store or the seafood part of the grocery store, you can figure out how to... Do it. Yeah. And you've done that for us tonight. Yes. You navigated for us, and mm -hmm. this is a recipe that they all can keep. Yes. And they can make time and, and time Remember, you can switch out. If you didn't have butternut squash, but you had carrots, put the carrots in. That adds the bright, beautiful color. Just make sure you, you get them all the way cooked. Um, you could put you could put anything you want in there. It, it's you know what I say to people. I say a recipe is merely your guideline of how much of each thing can go in. If you don't like something in that recipe, uh, change out the pumpkin for the squash. Change out you know all, but all use, around. But try to stay within the same the same measurements. Got it. Keeping the same measurements of things. Right. Um, liquid. Liquid. Yes. And, and another good example of if I write you a recipe, say, for mango papaya salsa, this is a perfect incident. Um, I make you a recipe, and I, it's in the winter time when I go to buy the, gro the mangoes in the grocery store. They've been imported from another country. They're not ripened on the tree. They're not sweet. When I write that recipe, I'm going to tell you to add a quarter cup of sugar to the salsa. If I write the recipe in the summer when Florida mangoes are in season and they're, they're peak sweetness, I'm not going to add any sugar. Interesting. So yeah. that's why I always have tasting spoons, always, and my palate is the final judge of any recipe. Before I season it with salt, spice, or sugar, I always taste it first to make sure it's where I want it, and depending on the time of year. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, everybody, I want to thank you for joining us. We have our last chef of the season coming up. I believe I the date. Question. Oh, we have a question. Yes. Um, do I use all the chicken broth? No, you don't, sweetie. Uh, you have a 32 ounce container, yeah. and you only use a cup and a half. A cup and a half, and that'll give you chili consistency. If you oh, oh. if you go in and add the whole thing, then what do you have? You have a, a ground turkey soup, which is still going to taste great. It's still going to be great, but it'll be more of a soup than it is a chili. And Adrian, you should have your recipe there too. So I as know, we... but it's, it doesn't say anything about the chicken broth. Oh, okay. it just says then add the chicken broth. Okay, but in your ingredient list. Above your yeah. directions, it gives you the actual amount. So, so when you're reading the ingredients, it tells you how much, and then the directions tell you what to do with it. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. I, Very I good. Like, well, I don't know. If that's... What was that, Adrian? I used half of the thirty-two ounce. Okay, that's probably a little more than you needed, but that's okay. That's okay, but you know what you can do? If you want to keep the chili consistency, you still have more tomato paste left. Take another tablespoon of tomato paste and mush it in there, and it should thicken the sauce, as well as if the pumpkin, uh, I keep calling it pumpkin, if the butternut squash is soft, you can mush that to thicken the sauce as well. Good point. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Everybody have a good night. God bless. And we will see you back here in December with our final chef of the season. That's Brad Kilgore. So we're oh, excited. fun, fun, fun. Yes. He's a great chef. Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.